Hello guys, I hope you are doing great. In this video, this video is a complete guide for those who wish to have a CPU cooler for their PC. I cover both water coolers and air coolers in this guide, Intel and AMD CPUs. First, I will show you if you actually need a new CPU cooler or not, how you determine safe operating temperatures, etc. Then I will show you problems with these online benchmarks available online because lots of people buy coolers studying these and then completely stunned as their results are much much different. Then I will show you if you already have a PC, how to precisely determine the right cooler for it. After that, I will show you if you haven't bought a PC, how do you choose the right cooler for it. And finally, a general list of CPU coolers for different types of CPU and actually buy a cooler for myself too, for my new PC I just recently built. Typically when someone asks me something with complicated answer, I give them link to a YouTube video guide. But I could not find a video like this on entire YouTube, so I decided to make it myself. Let's get started. Here is how you decide whether you need a better CPU cooler or not. If your CPU stays below 90C temperature, you are fine with the cooler you have. Safe times 4, a CPU is up to 90C, above 90C is dangerous, above 80C is hot and CPU can handle it but still invest in a cooler which gives below 80C temps. If your CPU stays above 90C, your CPU can get damaged due to heat, remember Heat is the enemy of electronics, not just CPU, keep your devices cool as possible and they will last forever. In my case we are seeing 80 plus temps here on 100% load. It will reach about 87 cc as the case gets warmer and warmer due to hot air inside. Also my computer is very new so right now the airflow is bad. As now I am upgrading it, I will also be upgrading the airflow, adding additional fans. Right now it's winter here, room temperature is 20C. In summer June it gets about 45C and if I turn off my room cooler and leave my PC rendering all night while I am away asleep, which is a common thing in 3D rendering, it will be above 90C all times and that is not safe. So for me, my current AMD Red Prism cooler is not safe at all. Many people just simply go to YouTube, type the name of their cooler and check its benchmarks and buy it. I myself did this back when I was buying this budget mid-sized cooler Cryoric H7. This is the video I saw and fell in this trap. I bought the cooler and my CPU was speaking at 91C in 3D rendering 100% load. I was so confused why my results are so different from many YouTubers and here is why. Keep the following in mind about these benchmarks. Firstly, they do these tests with air conditioner turned on at 20C and some even go lower than that, whereas my room was around 35C at that particular time of the year. Your room temperature affects your cooling performance, always keep that in mind. Secondly, take a look over here, they are using open air test bench. For air coolers, when you put in your case and close its panel, it will perform poorly compared to open air test benches. You can mediate the problem by improving airflow, but it won't help that much. In my case, I in my case, I had one front intake fan and when I installed three intake fans, temps went from 91C to 89C, so it was a minor improvement. And if your airflow is very bad, your case will keep getting hotter and hotter as hot CPU air circulates inside. And no matter what air cooler you use, your CPU will get pretty hot eventually. So make sure to take care of airflow properly. Okay, so. I am going to pretend I have no idea about my CPU power consumption and thermals. Let's get started. So first I will check my CPU thermals. I will do a 100% CPU stress, uh, stress test. There are plenty of free programs for it. In my case I will, use 3D, I will use 3D render program as it will do the same work. And my PC is uh, going above 80 C, it's winter. So it means it will perform very badly in summer, 90 plus times for sure. And I don't like 80 plus either, so let's go and find a good cooler. Then now as we know our CPU is getting hot, we will uh, identify its power consumption. So what we are going to do is to uh, install a free program, there are many free programs. The, the one I am currently using is called HW Monitor. Okay, so this thing shows you lots of things. The one we need is basically we are gonna close this one. And we are gonna come to switch is my CPU Ryzen 3800X. And uh, okay, so the one we need is power. So what we are looking for is max power. Currently, it's uh, identifying it at, at 54.17 watts. Okay, so this basically shows CPU usage, all how all cores are being used. 
and these other things now what i'm going to do is to put 100 percent stress uh, stress test again okay now while it works i'm going to okay so everything is at 100 percent as you can see and we need to see the max value so right now it's giving us 116 max this is the current value this is the maximum possible value it uh, the maximum value it reached so i'm going to wait here for a moment Alright, so it's been quite some time and it's still and it's still staying at 116 watts. So so I have a 116 watt CQ which means it's above 100 watts. If I was living in a cold area like uh, Moscow, you know, where the summers are also pretty chilly, you know, around 20 C even in June, July summer, then I would be picking something like a good mid-range cooler and it will be more than enough. It will keep my temperatures at super chill stage. Or if let's just say I was gaming and if I'm gaming, gaming that means I'll be using air conditioner always and my room will be super chill. So again, uh, a, mid, a good mid-range cooler will work just fine. But uh, I will, I'm the type of guy who will be doing 3D rendering in which case air conditioner etc. will be off and my computer will be running all night rendering a scene till morning and uh, it will be running at 100% at uh, 45C. In June, July, so that means I need a very, very good cooler. In my case, I will be getting a large size uh, dual fan cooler. So let's see uh, what we buy in the end. Okay, so now I'm going to show you guys how to choose your CPU cooler when you don't even have your computer yet. This time, I'm going to give uh, Intel as an example. For a processor, I'm going to go for something like Core i9-11900K, which is a top-line Intel CPU, 11 gen uh, Intel CPU. So I'm just going to type i9-11900K and power consumption and prompts. Okay, there you go. So we will go there. Okay, so as you can see, thanks to Google search engine, we it quickly helped us, but you might not be that lucky. So let's see what they say. They say the Core i9 11900K pulled a peak of 295 watts during the test, and time stopped at 100 C for brief periods. So we will come down here and we will come to okay power consumption and efficiency. We will also check this these pictures and see where is i9 okay. So, so as you can see okay so don't get confused by this basically core i9 11900k can reach all the way to 5.2 gigahertz. So so don't get confused by this uh, spellings. So we are going to see where it reaches the next floor 239 262 okay. So based on this, it's 262, but like they over here written. Okay, so over here they clearly wrote that the Core i9 11900K can reach to 295 watts. Okay, so if I was buying a Core i9 11900K, so I would no air cooler I know can actually cool this uh, cool this type of CPU properly. If you actually used any cheaper cooler on this. The CPU will never go to its maximum power usage because if it does, it will get extremely hot and will stay around 100 C. So it will thermal throttle basically. Okay, so for a 295 watt CPU, in order to cool this type of beast properly, we will I will be buying basically at least at least at least a 360 mm cooler. And here as well, as you can see, this is a 280 millimeter cooler. They are testing on. They clearly show this is Corsair 280mm cooler. And on this one, they say that uh, thermal state around 100C. And this was an air conditioner, most likely an air conditioned room, very chill air. So in summer, definitely this cooler will not work, but in winter it will uh, work. But if I was buying a Core i9 11900K, I will at least buy a 360mm cooler. And even on that thing, in summers, the CPU will go above 90C. So in order to properly cool this on 100% load in summer's 45C temperature, we are going to need a 420mm cooler. Yes, 
420 mm cooler is required to cool such type of piece properly on 100% load. So this is why power of checking power consumption is uh, very very important. And don't be fooled by Intel website. Check this out. So what, let's see what they did on the TTP over here. So there are the TTP is uh, where is the TDP? TDP 125 watts. Oh my god, come on seriously man. This is not 125 watt CPU. This is bullshit. This is scam. And even many shopkeepers might actually uh, fool you. They will recommend you a cheap cooler with this CPU. Ah, yeah, there you go, take it to your finest. And when you come home and install it, it will be super hot. I mean there are like I have seen so many posts on forums and on Facebook groups that oh my god my CPU is running hot and uh, what's going on I'm using a 120 mm cooler or something or a very large air cooler etc and my CPU is still very hot and I'm like just tell me the name of your CPU and they're like Core 9 10 generation or 11 gen and guess what I'm like you are going to need a 360 mm cooler for this this is not going to help you so this is why research is important. Make sure to do research properly before buying your hardware or you can get scammed like this. I always recommend going for an air cooler if you can. They are cheaper and a large air cooler can actually outperform a 240mm water cooler and are much more reliable too. What more do you want? But if your CPU actually consumes above 200 watts power, then buy a water cooler even if you have good airflow still buy a water cooler you want all that hot air thrown outside casing when power usage of a component reaches 200 watts we reach the heater territory if you don't know the more power something consumes hotter it will be that's how electric heaters work when choosing your cooler you need to keep in mind the hottest temperature your room can reach if you live in cold area like moscow then even in summer temperature is around 20 25 c or if you use your PC for gaming only, it means you are using AC in room in summer and room will be around 20C chill thanks to AC. But if you use your PC in very hot environment such as in my case where it will be rendering all night and it will just keep working in room 100% load with AC turned off in summers where temperature is around 45C, then you need a much better cooler. Here is what I recommend for below 80C CPU temps. For something like 50 or 60 watt CPUs. Get a small size cooler or a budget width size cooler if you if you are in a hot place, it will be more than enough. For 100 watt CPUs, get a budget width size cooler or a good large width size cooler if in hot places. For up to 200 watts, use a large dual tower air cooler. Now above 200 watts, we enter the heater territory, so it's a good thing to switch to AIO water coolers here. For up to 300 watts, use a 360mm cooler. This is what I bought, it's a 240mm radiator, my RAM is very tall and it was not compatible with the large dual tower air cooler so I had to go for a uh, water cooler here. When this thing arrives, I will be making a video about how to install AIO water cooler in your PC. I hope this video answered all the questions you guys had and if you found this video useful then please like as it tells YouTube this video is useful and subscribe as it helps the channel out and you can ask anything in comments and I will answer. I will see you guys again.